everybody. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series. And look at your screen. Look at all of the loveliness that's on our screen right now. <laughs> all of these talented musical powerhouses that are joining us from various locations here across the United States. I am your host, Jim Masters. We've got music. We've got exciting things to tell you about with each of these fabulous guests. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to change it up a little bit here on the Jim Masters Show Live series. I'm going to have them introduce themselves, starting with Queen Andrea. Welcome to the show once again. You've been on our show before, and it's so awesome to have you here. Tell us uh, a little bit about uh, your background and all the other exciting things you've been doing, my friend, since we chatted last. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I'm Queen Andrea Maria Black. Some of you on the show may know me as Evangelist Andrea Maria Black. And um, wow, I'm not only a singer songwriter, actress, filmmaker, music producer, uh, evangelist. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's me. Um, we are doing a performance. I'm producing the George D. Hernandez Music Festival in, uh, at the Triad Theater in New York City. And uh, these are some of the artists, well, they are the artists that will be participating. And this music festival is in homage to my great grandfather, George D. Hernandez, who was a tenor. Uh, of course, I never, I wasn't born when he was alive, but um, mm -hmm. I am keeping the music and art legacy in my lineage. And so this is our first annual music art festival at the Triad Theater um, in New York City. It's a small cabaret space. And um, wow, uh, this year I've been up to a lot of things. I've been working on a documentary film as a film director and producer. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. I don't want to take up too much time now. Um, <laughs> editing a film for Amazon Prime. Uh, what else? Uh, just busy working, honing my skills with my voice and uh, editing skills. Yeah. <laughs> That is wonderful. And I would love it since you were able to round up these other fabulous powerhouse talents for part of uh, our show. And also you guys are all working together on this wonderful event in New York. Um, introduce the other two wonderful ladies for us as well, Queen Andrea. Um, sure. Well, we have lovely Luana and Luana lives in Nashville. She is a New Yorker. And I believe she speaks German, is that true? I speak not only German, but also Spanish, French, and Bulgarian. Right. Yeah, you're a five-lingual <laughs> singer, songwriter, and actress, right? That's yeah. right. Yes. So I Queen Andrea that. is the wonderful songstress and songwriter and producer. And uh, Luana Sandoval is a five-lingual singer, songwriter, and actress. Spectacular. And also... Some may remember, some may remember, also on American Idol. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. Did you know that, Queen Andrea? I did not. Yes. Also on American Idol as well, which is quite exciting. You've all mm -hmm. done some masterful work over the years. Uh, there's another great photo, too. We've got lots of photos we're sprinkling in, but figured that would uh, trigger some memories for some folks. Uh Luana, when you were on American Idol, what was, for folks who maybe didn't see it, what were you performing? Uh, what was your audition and your performance? I auditioned with Madonna's song Frozen, and I did it my way. So I performed it in a pop opera version with belly dance. That's why you see the fan. And Luke, he loved my fan, and I had to do it again, and then he try to belly dance with my fan. <laughs> so it was a blast. And uh, they were blown away by my voice. And oh, yeah. it was a great experience that I will always cherish. And also 
Lionel Richie said he really enjoyed my performance. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And and that is fantastic. And great exposure, too, to be on a show like that. Absolutely. Really. Queen Andrea, we have another wonderful guest in this musical uh, trifecta here of talent and beauty and effervescence and passion and enthusiasm. These three wonderful ladies joining me here on the show. I'm a very lucky gentleman on the Gym Master Show today. Who else do we have, Queen Andrea? We have Natalia. Okay, let me give it a try. <laughs> Medvedovskaya. Medvedovskaya. <laughs> Harasho. <laughs> That's very good. We've got to give Queen Andrea a hand for that, right? Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. And uh, and how did you guys meet Queen Andrea? And I met Natalia, Natalia through Luana. Oh, so Luana, okay, so you connected. So Luana, how did you meet Natalia? How did that happen? <laughs> so we met back in January of 2017. That was the time when I traveled, uh, visited New York for the first time from Germany, and I recorded my original songs with Mark Roos, and Natalia was working with him at the same time and then Mark introduced me to Natalia and from there we developed a friendship and also we performed together at the Metropolitan Room in September oh, of yeah. 2017. Yeah, great place Metropolitan Room as well. Natalia, tell us about uh, your amazing background. You're a renowned concert pianist and composer and songwriter extraordinaire and so much more. Uh, highly acclaimed, and it's an honor to have you with us as well. Tell us a little bit about some of your background as well, and welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So I started playing piano when I was six years old, maybe even five years old, mm. and I developed love for music since my very tender age. Uh, I was already singing when I was eight months old, wow. uh, and uh, then... Uh, I studied in a special music school for gifted children, and then uh, I was admitted to St. Petersburg Conservatory, one of the legendary conservatories where uh, many great com composers of last centuries um, studied and taught. Uh, and so I graduated from St. Petersburg Conservatory um, with double major degree um, in um, piano performance and composition music composition so and uh, so and then i started um, composing in different genres um not only classical as it, because this is my main background classical background um since maybe 13 years old i started also uh composing pop songs and some different pop tunes, melodies and instrumentals. And um, when I was 20 years old, I started composing lyrics to my own songs. And I also collaborated with different songwriters. Uh, I, I received a number of awards. Uh, in 2015, I was uh, blessed to be in Hollywood, and uh, I received an award as a uh, best classical artist for uh, yes, and best classical composition award for uh, "Joke." Uh, this the name of the uh, song, the piece, "A Joke for Flute and Piano." Yes, and also uh, I received the awards at um, Billboard Song Contest. Uh, 11 Unison contest and many others, and also I'm uh, first grand uh, prize winner uh, of two co international competitions as a composer. Um, so I also I also compose film music and uh, Broadway songs, Broadway songs as well. And lately, I also developed passion for Christian music. So I'm also writing hymns with my own music and lyrics. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. That is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So I yeah, quite busy, huh? <laughs> what's, a, what's a typical day like for you, Natalia? 
uh, typical day, I I would work on my compositions and I uh, prepare for my concerts because I I play uh, in different concert halls in New York regularly. Yeah. Um, uh, in the spring next year, I will have a concert in Barge Music, uh, where I perform regularly, and also I performed in. Carnegie Hall a few times and yes um so that's uh, fantastic was, is the family musical too you're surrounded by family that's in music as well yes yes my mom is pianist uh my father used to play saxophone in jazz orchestras uh solo saxophone uh, and even my grandmother was a pianist and my grandfather was a violinist. So wow. they really nurtured uh, me as a... <laughs> they yes. Noticed, they, they noticed that I love music and they developed this love uh, in me. Uh, how about so you? I, hmm? Yeah, I, I was going to say, Luana, how about you too? Were you surrounded by music? How did uh, music sort of touch you early on, music and performance and entertainment? My mom used to be a school teacher for music and also she composed music on a piano. And I uh, fell in love with dancing first before I became a singer-songwriter. And I went to a lot of shows with my parents, ba ballet shows, and then when I turned 15, I wanted to become a singer-songwriter. And But before that, I, yeah, this picture you can see is, is from my dance play, Life of a Dancer, that I wrote in 2015 and performed and in Germany. And that was during my studies. That's when I discovered that writing music, besides performing, is also a passion. And yeah contemporary music and digging into different music styles, putting them together, doing my own stuff and not following the rules. So sort of creating your own, how, how do you describe your style and your flavor and your vibe, Luana? I am in between Madonna, Gloria Stefan and Natasha um, Nat Brighton. Oh yeah, Sarah sure. Bright Sarah Brightman. Sarah Brightman, yes. Sarah Brightman. So that's the wide range. It is yeah, quite a mix. See a picture of me performing with the orchestra in Trier. Uh, I was singing Carmen Habanera. That's incredible, huh? Wow, that's amazing stuff. And Queen Andrea too. For those who haven't seen when you were on before you have an extraordinary background as well and you've been doing this for quite some time and you love what you do and uh, you you open up your arms and say let it flow through me <laughs> <laughs> in such a beautiful way you're an ocean person like me you love the ocean and i absolutely love the ocean the ocean i find very invigorating and very not just refreshing, but it just feeds me um, in such a beautiful way. And uh, you obviously are an ocean person as well. There's a beautiful shots of you, uh, Queen Andrea. Tell us about um, some of the inspirations for you as well over the years that have brought you to, you know, the beautiful place that you are at now, which is um, a sweet spot in your life. <laughs> Wow, there's so much to say. I, um, ah, you know, those pictures, let me start since you showed those pictures. Um, I shot uh, two weeks ago because I'm putting together a music video to a song I wrote about, well, in homage to my father and to veterans and to just to fathers who have been heroes in our life. And uh, so in the last few years, actually, I like to say that my dad is 87 now, and I was just thinking, 
of bringing uh, his career in the Negro Leagues to the world. And so that importance and inspiration led me to uh, write a documentary film on him. Not really write, but it, I conceptualized it from the events in his life, you know, playing ball mm -hmm. and, uh, during the time of the Jim Crow laws in that era. Tell us about your dad for folks uh, who aren't familiar. It's an amazing story. Right. I think I mentioned it to you before. Uh, he, he's 87. He's a, a retired Negro League baseball player <clears throat> and veteran. He was an entrepreneur, uh, had his own record store. And that's really what inspired me was the record store when I was a child listening to so much music of all genres, classical, jazz, R&B, blues, country, everything. And getting to becoming familiar with so many voices that I really never um, sounded like anyone. I, I developed a very distinct sound. Um, so in the last few years, uh, I decided to go back to the university to become a filmmaker and a music producer. And so um, my big project is this documentary called Our Fathers our heroes and it's excuse me it's just in a editing well it's already edited i'm just kind of polishing it up a little bit refining yeah. it for film festivals and for screenings and for some really important things to come that's beautiful huh that's that's very exciting that is fantastic yes you guys mentioned again this wonderful event that is coming up and it's it's quite exciting it's nice to you know have the opportunity to get back out there amongst fans and to celebrate music and celebrate life and celebrate living in the way that you individually do with your own talents and now have the opportunity to do it collectively um, what can people expect when they go to this event and tell us about the importance of the George D. Hernandez Music Fest. It's, <laughs> it's celebrating a lot of incredible things. Yes. Well, first it's celebrating music and art. And it's celebrating female artists, singers, songwriters, music producers, music uh, women in technology. Um, it's inspiring our audiences who have been shut down, locked in during the pandemic. And we're coming with um, sacred music from different genres and bringing our own stories of trials and triumph to inspire people. So uh, that's the importance, importance is to make an impact on lives, you know, during so many crises going on in this world today. Yes. Hearing our music, you know, that's a God-given gift and we have a voice to share. So that's important. That's important. Yes, yes absolutely. What, um, what have each of you learned about yourselves during the last few years? You know, we, we've been saying here on the show that it's been a time of great pause, reflection, time to reboot recharge as well, reconnect and get creative again and hopefully collaborative, less divisive. I keep saying, I hope we rise from the ashes of all the craziness, more loving, empathetic, kinder, and more connected. How It's also been a time for people to pause and look at their lives, what they've been doing, what they've accomplished, and where they want to go next, next chapter. It's It's been as horrific as it's been, it's also been a beautiful time for people to roll up their sleeves, entrepreneurs to develop new ideas to come to fruition and new creativity to happen. So I'll start with you, Queen Andrea. What are some of the things that Queen Andrea learned about herself during this great time of pause, the last three years or so? And what are some of the things going forward that you want to do through your talent, through your art, to continue to inspire others? I have to say there's more emphasis in 
not waiting, but getting what you want done now. Getting what you what what you are called to do now. Now is the time. Not procrastinating. Not you know waiting on this or waiting on that. Um, you have a gift, and um, you want to make an impact in the world. And you know, so many people have passed during the pandemic, and so many other different crises. So much going on in our world today. Yeah. That um, there's just no time to sit on your gift. There's no time to just um, uh, take it for granted. Right. right. You know. So whatever you do. Do it now and leave a legacy. It's so true. And that's so beautiful. And that's really what it's about. That's what you're supposed to do. And uh, you know, we've all been learning about different aspects of our lives through it all. Uh, Natalia, how about you? What are some things you've learned about yourself um, and the time of reflection that we've had and yes. things that you want to do going forward in your life? Well, uh, I felt, first of all, I thought that this is the end of uh, times. I thought that nothing will happen after this. I was so depressed. And then uh, my two friends, like my angels, really, they told me, Natalia, please keep composing. Please keep composing what you assigned to do by God. And it helped me so much. It really inspired me. And actually, before lockdown, I was commissioned to compose some classical piece. It's called Barcarolle uh, for um, flute, harp, violin, viola, and cello. And I first was not even in the mood to do it because I thought that nothing, nothing is going to happen. But somehow, my friends really inspired me, and I started uh, to be... I started to, to I started composing and I felt so focused on this and happy. I felt like this lockdown really made me so happy. <laughs> it's it's uh, I know that it sounds a little bit contradictory and I actually lost uh, some of my friends, some of my close friends, and it was very painful. But yeah. it also gave me inspiration. It also gave me inspiration, and I think that my composition, this composition that I composed during lockdown uh, turned out to be one of my best compositions. And then after the lockdown, I actually, I received a grand prize for, for that composition. <laughs> yes. That's so, wonderful yeah. too, huh? I, so it's been a time, it's given you time to breathe and, and pause a little bit, uh, which a lot of, especially performers have been saying that, that normally people that are out there performing or anybody in any, you know, career, life is busy and life has a lot of demands and you always have to be here. And, and if you're a performer, you're always on stage or in a studio and writing and producing and recording and performing and entertaining. And then in the beginning it was scary, but then you got time to sort of look at other things and maybe uh, touch upon other things that you weren't able to do earlier that you had time to do, Absolutely. Yeah. which yeah. was a gift in a way through all the, the madness of it all. It was a gift in many respects. And so you, you seize the gift and, and made great, uh, great use of it, which I think is absolutely fantastic. How about you, Luana? What are some things that you learned about Luana and about where you've been and where you'd like to go and some of the things that um, have inspired you along the way through the last few years of the madness? <laughs> I learned that I, no matter what's happening, I can achieve my goals, no matter how weird the world is, how how weird the circumstances are. But they are also, you know, you learn from those experiences. For me, I wrote songs with King Charlie Prince, who also wrote the song "The Rooms on Fire." Everybody knows it. So we performed five tracks in 2020. I wrote two parody songs about COVID. And I went to Times Square because nobody was there and it was empty and I shot my music video there. And then I got 
the invite to audition in Ojai, California for American Idol. And they paid the flight and everything. And before auditioning for American Idol, I was in Nashville for one month. That was in October of 2020. I was able to perform again. I got an apartment in downtown Nashville and then I was like, okay, I'm meant to move to Nashville, no matter what. I don't know anyone here, but something is saying you have to move to Nashville. You have to leave New York for a while. And this is what I did. So after the audition, uh, which was in November in California, uh, American Idol, they booked my flight back to instead of New York, back to Nashville, because mm -hmm. I told them, I'm moving, guys. I only had 10 days after after I returned from Nashville in October. I had 10 days to pack all my stuff and to, yeah, from after the audition to move to Nashville, which was in December then. And I started again from scratch. And, yeah, a new city, new life, new chapter building relationships in the music business and yeah but it was al already a routine for me because i had to start from scratch in new york when i moved from germany in may of 2018 and i didn't know anyone so it was nothing new to me but it was different because yeah it was during a pandemic and it was still like Mm, well, it's still better than New York. Um, some bars were open. They had some live music, but still, performing-wise, it was not so much. But I used the downtime to work on my songwriting skills. Last year, I went to a songwriting retreat with Judy Stagey. She was Katy Perry's former songwriting mentor. And she did a songwriting retreat in Nashville in, October, in August of last year. And she introduced me to co-writing which i never did before because i always wanted to be wanted to do everything by myself writing the lyrics and the music and everything producing it and then well i i had some producers they put my demo to they uh, took the, my demo to the next level but co-writing is so much fun and thanks to judy i discovered it's so cool and you always learn from different people in different co-writing sessions and I've been working on currently five songs where, that I wrote with co-writers in Nashville. So. Wow, that's amazing. That is really, really fantastic, huh? That, that is really, really cool. So you've been busy too, and you've been, uh, you know, uh, grabbing the bull by the horn and just making things happen, which I think is really, really fantastic. Congratulations, ladies, to to all of you on all the wonderful successes. Uh, you know, none of it comes uh, easy. And, uh, you know, you can even get uh, Natalia's music on Spotify. Look at that cool shot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for finding this picture. <laughs> yes, huh? These are great shots here we've got. We've got a lot of cool photos of... Uh, of all of you that we've been sort of sprinkling in here a little bit um is is your favorite instrument the piano would you say that it is that's the one or and and do you play other instruments in addition to the piano uh, well uh i recently started um playing organ i oh, yeah. learn yeah it's my passion right now because i i like to learn i like to learn it's something new it's it's so exciting to explore some new new heights some some uh, new things yeah and i recently uh played in a church i played my hymn uh, that is called salvation is near uh, i played it with a singer and i yes i played an organ <laughs> Wow. Uh, Queen Andrea and Luana, do you guys play instruments too at all? Yes, my first instrument was piano, which my mom uh, taught me when I was 10. And then I lost interest because I was more interested in dancing. And But then I had to learn it again at the age of 19 because I had to, uh, in order to qualify for my the University of Music, where I studied opera singing, I had to play two songs, two classical songs on the piano. I was like, 
Oh my goodness, I have to learn this again yeah. at the age of 19. <laughs> and within one year, I, pra I practiced every day and I, I nailed the audition. So it's possible. If you want something so badly, you can do it. That's also, right. with, I started out with opera singing at the age of 19 as well. So I did everything that was back in 2011. Uh, I, and also music theory, reading music, and all, all this fun stuff. <laughs> How <laughs> about you, Queen? Awesome. You know, when you yes. every single day, when you, you know, it's also time management when you put like 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, and then do something else and go back and repeat it. You can, you can do it. You can do whatever you want. I think each of you are great representations of that to be able to do what it is in your heart and soul because each of you have been able to create your own path and create your own vision and, and live it through your individual talents and uh, your respective backgrounds, which is very inspiring for anybody watching who might be saying, oh, I can never do what you know, Natalia does and Luana and Queen Andrea. I'll never get to those levels. I'll never be able to do these things. But never give up, right? I think each of you ladies would say, don't give up and don't listen to the negative energy. Don't surround yourself with negative energy that will pull you down or say, don't even bother. You'll never be able to do it or don't waste your time. If anything, go in the opposite direction, right? You would all agree? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. Have, have, I even have, quote in my song, Smile, it's your best makeup. Surround yourself with uplifting people. Yes. Definitely. Queen Andrea, I know that that's very big for you, right? You, you live and breathe that every day. Yes. You know, I spoke about that with you last time, Jim. And that's why I have Luana here and, and Natalia, because it's uh, so important to work with people, not just that are talented, but that are people of integrity, people that are kind, respectful. And, you know, they're on your team. They're not trying to outshine or, you know, um, it, it, there's a mission here. There's a vision here. There's uh, compassion, love. Yes. Love it. <laughs> Lovity, that's right. Lovity, you got it. Absolutely. <laughs> that is quadruple Lovity here on the show. Well, our viewers who are commenting live from around the world, we welcome everybody. If you want to comment, say hello during the show, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, and you can comment right now in our JMS Lovity chat room as well. And everybody's saying hello and greeting all of you. Um, there's some music that each of you have uh, gone through the great trouble to put together for us. Um, Queen Andrea, did you want to start us with something? Uh, sure. Why don't you choose something out of the selections I sent you? <laughs> I think you're going to do something special for us on the spot, aren't oh, you? Oh, I'm going to do something live. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, that, okay. that way we avoid any copyright problems, which sometimes, <laughs> sometimes YouTube. Whew, oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Sometimes with copyright on YouTube, if you if you broadcast something that's copyrighted and you don't know it is and the guest doesn't know and then you air it, they will actually block a live show and stop it. Mm. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So yeah. we're careful with all that. <laughs> <laughs> and live is better because live, it's unique. It's like you're doing it special for oh, yes. the folks that are watching right now. So it's it's got a nice little extra touch. Right, yeah. right, it sure does, okay. And, and Natalia's been waxing the, the keys on that piano for four hours, <laughs> so she's definitely gonna, she definitely wants to play. She's gonna like, you know, we had to get a wet rag out of the kitchen and everything. There's no way I'm not gonna play live, Jim. <laughs> right, Natalia? She's, <laughs> she's, poli she's polished up those keys since two o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> Dusting, vacuuming. They bought a new couch behind her just for the show. <laughs> and Luana bought this beautiful apartment behind her with the grand piano. <laughs> you have this spectacular golden microphone next to you, Queen Andrea. Yes. That, that thing is gorgeous. Oh, thanks. Do you use that for recordings too? I do. 
That is so in my nice. home studio. Yeah. Very nice. Do you each of you have studios in your homes? Yeah. Yes, a home studio. So, yeah. so you can all record at home as well. That's fantastic. Queen Andrea, you have something actually very, very special. I know you put aside for us. I, I tell do. us about it. Uh, it's a South African song called Womam um Babe Tandaza. And Babe Tandaza is is uh, the grandmothers, the mothers who are the matriarchs in Africa. They are highly respected. And so this song, it is in homage to all of our mothers, all of our grandmothers. And I wanna say, especially to my mom who uh, transitioned to glory in 2014. <clears throat> so let me get on the right key. <clears throat> That's beautiful. Yes, we will definitely um, think of the loving memory of your mom. What was your mom's name? Ramona Theon Black. Mm -hmm. Well, sending levity. Yeah, yeah, very special. Tell us, tell us a little bit about her. Okay, she was a a teacher, taught business courses. Um, she taught in high school public school, Catholic schools, private schools. And um, yeah, and she, after she retired, she became an ordained reverend. Mm -hmm. She did a lot of outreach, uh, mainly like out in this, you know, helping the homeless. That's beautiful. Helping um, in nursing homes. She preached too, but she liked being out in the mission field. And she mm -hmm. also uh, supported my ministry very much so. You know, it's obvious just talking about your mother and your father that uh, the apple does not fall far from the tree, as they say. You've, you've had such wonderful, rich upbringing and love and empathy and inspiration and, and see people be able to make success and triumph through. And I think that's where you get a lot of your enthusiasm for life and your passion and your tenacity and can-do spirit is just in what you've described so far of your mother and your father, which uh, is is a very beautiful gift, isn't it, Queen Andrea? Absolutely, yes. And just a little tag to what you, the last question you asked is that, you know, when through the pandemic and everything, you know, we really had to just, we had the time to, pause and spend more time with our loved ones yes even if we can see them to call them to because we get so busy and we take we can take people for granted yes i always say we honor what we value i love that actually pause there folks did you hear what she just said that is so important to to live by that rule that is so that's beautiful that is beautiful. Do you, I mean, do you conduct services where people can go and see you preaching or do you do that? Is that somewhere where people can go? And because I'm sure people would, would love to see you do your <laughs> thing, huh? Sure. Yeah. Well, I, my, my ministry is more outreach. So I'm yeah. usually going out physically to preach to or on the mission field in That's the cool. U.S., abroad. And I, what I do a lot is I, um, before the pandemic, I was doing outside conferences and yeah. workshops, but I, I also do them on Zoom. So, you know, people can always come there. Actually, next, uh, this Sunday, I'm preaching in Poughkeepsie, New York at my church. So I've been busy working on a sermon for that. <laughs> the that. Souls and, yes. That's beautiful. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. All right, uh, time for a beautiful song from Queen Andrea and uh, take it away here on the Jim Master Show. So wonderful to see you again, my friend. Thank you so much, Jim. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whoa, mama bagu dala babe tandaza. 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 Babe tandaza, babe tandaza. Babe tandaza, babe tandaza. Babe tandaza, babe tandaza. Babe tandaza, babe tandaza. Sing jan jan jan, 
tandazo sen jan jan ja ke me tandazo 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 Wow. <laughs> What'd you think, ladies, huh? <laughs> well, this reminded me of Angelique Kicho. Ah. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. Beautifully done, Queen Andrea. Beautifully done. Uh, do you have some other travel coming up, too? I know, of course, you have this event at Triad, but are there, is there other travel that you see coming up for you? There is. I would look at it more next year. Yeah. And also um, the festival expanding outside yes. and inside. So, oh, yeah. that's nice. I think that right now is just, just trying to get it acclimated back into the theater, you know, and all of that. And then making plans, you know, to travel, you know, to expand my boundaries territory <laughs> that is so beautiful that is really yeah. beautiful all right natalia would you like to uh tickle the ivories a little bit for us as well what have you uh cooked up for us uh i cooked up <laughs> the song that is called that is called hope i feel that uh in now times we still need a lot of hope we still need uh, yes. stability in our lives, safety and peace, of course. So this song, Hope, I want to perform for you. And I bet when she's at Carnegie Hall performing, she doesn't turn and look at the audience and say, I cooked up this song for you. <laughs> <laughs> she might use slightly different wording. <laughs> There we go. I know you've been working hard. You've had this all sort of figured out how you're doing it, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, tell us about the instrument itself that you have before you there. Ah, oh, this instrument, it's a, it's a keyboard. That's just a Yamaha keyboard. But I also have a grand piano. You can see there. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, it's on the left, yeah. right? We see that, yeah. Grand, grand piano, Stanway, mm -hmm. and I also have a few more keyboards here in my home studio. Very nice, mm -hmm. very very nice. All right, time to tickle those ivories, Natalia. Take it away, my friend. Thank you. 
Wow. That is absolutely stunning. That is really beautiful. Wouldn't you say, ladies? Huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> that it. is, uh, and, and they're all uh, commenting about uh, each of you thus far. Very pretty music, and that makes me wish I could play or sing. <laughs> Merlin watching in Canada, Mary's in Florida, and Sal Boyd is here with lots of claps. And Merlin in Canada says, "Wow!" And claps from Catalina, New York City, and everybody watching. Thanks for the great comments. That is really, really uh, beautiful stuff. I tell you, Thank huh? You. Yeah, you're absolutely um, <laughs> very nice. Thanks for doing that for us. And Luana Sandoval has something beautiful that she has cooked up for us as well. Uh, the five lingual singer, songwriter, and actress. Um, what what do you have for us uh, today on the show? I'm going to sing my song, Smile, It's Your Best Makeup, which is inspired by my mentor, Forbes Riley. And because she always says, life happens for you, not to you. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, I should write a song about it. And I turned it, it to a pop gospel song. And here we go. That's fantastic. So you turned it into a gospel song? Yes. Oh, that's great. All right. Here we go. Here's Lauren. Surround yourself with uplifting people. Break up with your sorrows. Don't waste your time. Leave your struggles behind and smile. It's your best makeup. <laughs> I rose from the ashes and stood in my glory. Finally, I'm living dreams from such a hole of darkness. Find the joy, find the joy in every minute, every minute. Find the joy, find the joy in every minute, every minute in your life. Whoa, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Because life happens, life happens. Life happens for you. I said, Life happens, life happens, life happens for you and not to you. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, that's true. It does happen for you and not to you. It's it's all about perspective, isn't it? It's all about how you approach it and, and how you react to it that, that matters most. You like songs that inspire like that, that uh, really cut to the heart and soul, Luana? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Who are some of the artists that uh, you've listened to over the years that inspire you, maybe as you were learning uh and being trained and, and educated in in music and performance who are some of those that you've always admired it's still madonna number one she's still around number borderline two. keep on ba, 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 ba. <laughs> yes and she always reinvents herself she does I, yes i'm a huge fan of her latest record madam x uh, because it's inspired by music from around the world, from Lisbon to to Marrakesh to Brazil, yeah. and I even met her uh, percussionist and guitarist, New Yorker Police. He was also on tour with Cesaria Evora, and we both wrote a song together, which is called La Soledad. And this song, I'm gonna sing at the tribe theater. 
Oh, fantastic. That's exciting. You heard that here first, folks. She just did a little preview, a little teaser. That is fantastic. Queen Andrea, too, who are some of the folks coming up for you? We mentioned your parents. Well, who are some others that have inspired you along the way as well? Are you talking about artists? Artists and it really could be anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I have so many people that have inspired me. Uh, I'll just give you a few. <laughs> Growing up, I, I was really in love with jazz. And I used to listen to Phyllis Hyman. And mm -hmm. I used to listen to uh, Angela Bofill and um, on the R&B side is Roberta Flack and yeah. the Supremes and, uh, oh boy, uh, Dionne Warwick. Oh, yeah. Uh, Marian Anderson, Leontine Price. Uh, you know who we had on the show recently? Florence oh. LaRue. Oh, wow. Frida Payne. Oh, wow, yeah. Ava Cherry, the yeah. Pointer Sisters. <laughs> yes. They've all stopped by and uh, really, really beautiful and fantastic talents. Mm -hmm. Extraordinaire. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Gifted and um, of course, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah. Uh, for what he stood for and uh, justice is something that's very important in our world. Yes. Love, right? Uh, love conquers all things. That's right. That's <laughs> I think right. he said, resist in love, not in hate. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Beautiful songstress Andrea's songs have inspired her family through the years. Three talented ladies, strong message, way to go, Luana, gifted, Kathleen for Natalia. Very nice. All the ladies are divinely gifted. Love this. Well, welcome. If this is the first time you're joining us here on the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Variety Talk Show Series, this is what we do. And we've got about 760 other episodes that you can take a month to sit back with a cup of coffee and watch with amazing guests like the three ladies we have here. This, for those of you watching for the first time, this is actually a return visit for Queen Andrea. If you didn't see the episode when she was on singularly, we had so much fun and great music and deep conversation. And yes. she reached out to me. She, you know, we had such a wonderful instant connection between the two of us. Uh, same wavelength, kindred spirit thinking that she said, we would be putting this together for like a month. I would love to come back on. And I have some wonderful musical, very talented friends who are working with me on this concert performance coming up in New York City. And I'd love to have us all come on to, again, share levity and kindness and great music and to, of course, talk about the upcoming concert. So that's beautiful, Queen Andrea, that you wanted to come back on. and. Uh, bring these wonderful talents and friends with you as well. Thanks for inviting us again. Mm -hmm. So Natalia, um, how about you? Who are some that uh, have inspired you, whether they're uh, in the musical world or just people in general who you've always either been mentored by or just looked up to and inspired by as well? Well, first of all, my parents. Uh, and also my cousin, who is a singer-songwriter himself. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Okay. In the States uh, here? Uh, no, he's uh, in my hometown. He stays in my hometown. And um, uh, at the musical point of view, of course, a lot of classical composers made an emotional impact on me. Uh, Debussy, I would say, uh, Impressionism, um, Bach, uh, Chopin, Mozart, and uh, Prokofiev, and uh, from um, contemporary, from contemporary singers, uh, uh, singer songwriters, I would call Sting, of course, Sting, and uh, Abba band, uh, which was very popular. Yes, my hometown, and uh, yes, um, 
also later uh, in in 21st century, I would say Maroon 5. <laughs> I, I like Maroon 5, yes. So what uh, was your hometown, yeah. Natalia? Uh, St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg in Russia, yeah. It's a beautiful place, yeah. So much history has come out of there, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yes. Great art and music and culture, yeah. It's, it's one place I haven't been yet around the world that I would love to go and experience um have you traveled the world natalia or have you had an opportunity to go to other parts of the world either through your music or just to travel and visit yes i traveled the uh, uh, czech republic uh where i received the uh, honorable award uh as a pianist when i was just 15 years old uh and i was in canada just as a tourist <laughs> uh and in different parts of uh, america and russia and also in siberia actually where my orchestral composition was performed did you bring a warm sweater when you went to siberia <laughs> no very, very ironically it was very hot it was hot. hot at that time yes. <laughs> <laughs> like in Florida. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Queen Andrea, how about you? Have you had a chance to uh, travel the globe? And what are some of the experiences and some of the favorite places you've had an opportunity to go to? And maybe some places that are on your bucket list where you really would like to go. Okay. Well, let's start off that I lived in Russia for two years. I was studying acting and there's a professor of jazz dance there teaching children teaching uh, professional ballerinas uh, judging competitions and choreographing um so i was working in um as a classical actress and recorded a lot of music so uh, natalia and i had a, have a lot in common <laughs> i understand a lot of things um about uh, Russia, I lived in Moscow. And um, through my ministry, I, for eight years consecutively, I've been working in uh, Uganda, Africa. And uh, I was preaching in different, uh, let's see, Canada, South America, uh, where else? So Africa, South America, Canada, Russia, uh, <laughs> wow. uh, in the, the some parts of the Caribbean, I did some missionary work there. So um, my bucket list <laughs> is quite big. And one is Italy um, and some other countries in the continent of Africa. Uh, Germany. Actually, I was going to preach in Germany, but it was um, it was canceled because of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm a, I love traveling, and um, it's very important to me to to spread what God has given me to uh, other cultures. Yeah. So yeah. No other culture, and, right. and that I'm singing in a lot of different languages. Also, France. I was in France a few times. Yeah. You know, it's wonderful what you're seeing on the screen right now, too, is a representation of America right here. Beautiful land of America, all different backgrounds and cultures and visions. And it's what makes America great. All these influences and these different thought processes and all coming together, melding together in, in the way that it does. It's not a perfect place but it's a work in progress. <laughs> and I truly believe when we are together and we are working together and creating, uh, it's a magical place. So, you know, yes. it's something to really always think about. How about you, Luana? I, you forgot, had... I forgot one thing. Yes. <laughs> I was recently in Austria. Oh, beautiful place. Yeah, in Salzburg. Mm, did you enjoy it? I loved it there. I, I could yeah. live there. <laughs> yeah. 
of an aunt that comes from Vienna, Austria, and she lives in Massachusetts. And just, yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful spot. Um, I haven't been to Switzerland yet. I would like to go to Switzerland. Um, that's a beautiful place to be as well. And uh, and I haven't been to Australia yet either. Have you? any of you been to Australia? My yeah. friend lives in Australia. <laughs> Your friend in Australia. I have a lot of friends in Australia, colleagues. <laughs> But I haven't been there yet, but that is on my uh, my list. Um, so, yeah, I, I, my background is English, Irish, Swedish, and French. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, those areas, of course, are places we've had opportunities to, to go. But um, there's so much more. You know, if you do your DNA, we are all related. You That's do your right. DNA... I did it all related. Yes, you will yes. find things that you never thought were in your DNA yes. that connects all of us. And our we all our red is uh, our blood is red. <laughs> Every That's single right. one of us. That's right. <laughs> the, same, the same color. That's right. Exactly right. Exactly. Luana, Cutting that- to the chase. <laughs> yes, exactly. Luana, how about you? Have you had a chance to uh traveled the world through either your uh, your music and your performances or just for the sake of, of traveling? And what are some of your favorite places and places where you would like to go to as well, Luana? I had my first flight when I was one year old. That was when my parents took me to my family in Nicaragua. So I, was still, <laughs> I still remember this, although I was only one year old. And then ever since we traveled each summer to Nicaragua and also to my family in Costa Rica, and I learned Nicaraguan folk songs and dances. And that's how I found my love for music and also its diversity in each country. And uh, then I traveled through Europe with my parents. We went to Spain, to France several times. Luxembourg, which is right next next door where I grew up. And then from there, I, when I was around 20, and that's when I started opera singing. And that's when I had performances in Bulgaria. And then from there, I flew to New York. In 2017, I had my first show, as I already mentioned, at the Metropolitan Room. And then 2018, when I finally moved to New York, I I danced together with Afra events and we performed throughout the U.S. And also I ended up in Toronto for, for two days because of uh, this dance company. And yeah, so uh, traveling and working and performing, this is what I love doing. And I... I've been around, so I, but I still have to go to New Zealand and Australia. This is on my bucket list, and Hawaii. That sounds good. What do you think, ladies? Hawaii? Yeah. Road trip to Hawaii with Luana. <laughs> Let's go. Aloha. Next time we're on, we'll do it from, we'll do it from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really, really good. Um, why do you love doing what you're doing? You know, there's a million different things that you could have picked for your careers. What is it about the arts and about entertaining and performance that speaks to your hearts and souls? Um, and of course, you take it further with ministry and so much more, Queen Andrea, um, with your beautiful message. I'll start with you, Queen Andrea. What is it about this world you've created and the arts and entertainment that speaks to your heart and soul. It calls you, Jim. It's in yeah. your blood. If yeah. you don't choose it, right. it chooses you. It chooses you. So mm-hmm. at a young age, all of us knew it was just in us to express ourselves through acting. I was writing poetry. I was even writing songs as a little girl, listening to the music from my father's record shop and dancing and singing. And really my mother discovered me, you know, how kids just perform in the house. And And she says, wow, you have a really nice voice. So when I was 11, she had me start 
taking opera lessons. And the, the teacher also was teaching me piano because she thought that would help. And then she says, oh, are you going to do recitals with us and the other kids? <laughs> of course. <laughs> sure. So my mother says, you need to get into the theater. They're doing a musical, the, the um, West Side Story, The Wiz. And so, you know, you just got into it. And there was no question. You knew that's what you were going to do. Yeah. I think for me, you're not thinking about other professions because you already found it. And you found a way of expressing yourself, which is very, ah, how do you, how do you express all of those feelings? Of, you know, um, it's very healing. It's very, um, it's very important because yeah. each of us have a voice. Yeah. To put it out there through lyrics, music, uh, Film writing, film directing, whatever it is, you know, writing books. Um, there's something to say, and it must be said. There's no one that could say it for you. Yeah. So that's that's, right. that's part of my take on it. How about you, Natalia? Well, I think that Andrea just read my mind because this is what I was going to, to tell you all that I feel that. I didn't choose my uh, profession. This profession, music chose me. Uh, very early, like uh, as long as I can remember myself, you know, when I was very little, I was trying to reach out to the piano keys. <laughs> I was very, very little and I was trying to reach out to the piano keys. So uh, I feel that uh, without music, I feel empty, like something's wrong. And music uh, makes me content, and uh, it inspires me. It makes me feel free uh, to express myself. And uh, I feel that music is a real gift from God. I just, I'm just so grateful to God that music, uh, yeah, music is the main part of my life the main part of my life and I cannot imagine my life without music mm. and really music heals music heals a lot uh, even when I feel low myself when I listen to music of other composers or even my own music I feel cheered up and I feel like a different person I feel like okay maybe yeah um, Everything is okay. Everything is okay. And I can move on. <laughs> yeah. It's it's so true. Music is so powerful. It's the universal language and it's so healing uh, on many levels. And it can really, you know, provide a range of great emotion and, and memory and beautiful, uh, you know, experiences that you relive and, and hope like what you played earlier. You know, it, it's just... Mm -hmm. It's something that we we need and we cannot have, you know, enough of. And I, it's funny, I've said to people, I don't smoke, but music is my cigarette. <laughs> 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 what people get from that, I, you know, that calm and content and like you said, contenting. Uh, there is something about it. Yeah, when you hear it, it just can really evoke great emotion. Um, you know, it's an instrument that I've always loved too. And I mentioned this a couple of times on the show. We just had somebody on the other night. I was interviewing in my professional work, uh, maybe two years, three years ago, a Juilliard trained cellist. And I was talking about, you know, various instruments and, and the beauty of the sound of instruments. Cause I also love a lot of instrumental music of all kinds, rhythmic because of all of it, strings, woodwinds, all of it. And um, I was talking about the cello and I said to the cellist, I said, you know, whenever I also hear the cello, it, it sort of stops traffic for me. Uh, it just sounds so warm and melancholy and enveloping and authoritative and in charge in a way. It just, it just goes right to boom, 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 boom here. And I said, I'm going to throw this out there and maybe it'll sound a little crazy to you, but I'll throw it out there too, because you're a cellist and, and maybe there'll be a 
relatability. And he said, well, what is it, Jim? And I said, well, whenever I hear the cello, whether it's singularly in an orchestra, whether it's, you know, in Christmas music, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it stops traffic for me. Literally, I just pulls me in and demands my attention. And I said, gee, if there was to be an instrument that if the heart, the human heart made a sound that mimicked the sound of an instrument, for me, it's when I hear that warm tone of the cello. And he said, ah, got it. I totally understand. It's not crazy, Jim. I said, really? That's fantastic. You're on my, you get what I'm talking about. And he said, yeah. He said, because the cello, uh, some of the, the tonality and just everything about the cello, uh, I guess, is one of those instruments that is closest in sound to the human voice. Yeah. So that's why you're humanizing it. And that's why you're getting humanistic characteristics from it. And that's why it sort of wraps you up whenever you hear that deep cello sound do you guys get any of that from the cello as well when you hear it played yes absolutely i collaborated with uh, many different cellists and i feel the same way i i, I compose for cello as well Ooh. yeah i feel that it's uh, one of the most soulful music instruments in the world. Really <laughs> yeah. how about you ladies do you agree with about the cello i would say uh, violin for me because violin. but I also learned violin and also I also wrote music for violin and piano for, for the dance play that I mentioned earlier. And also I, I like the vibration when the violin is so much Well oh, you have it up here, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. And also it also comes to my vocal cords, all the vibration and it helps me to understand how the vocal cords work. Because From as the a vibration singer, of the violin. Right. Wow. Uh, especially when I studied opera singing, my vocal professor, he always referred to the violin and the, the, the vibrato for opera singing. And then I said, okay, the violin, okay, works like this. Okay, and then that's how the, the vocal cords work. Because it's so hard as a singer, you can't see what's inside you. You can, you can have, you learn how the muscles work, but you cannot really see it. And when you see the violin, okay, you can see, oh, this is wrong with the violin and you can fix this. But as a singer, you have to work a lot with imagination. So that's why I always use the violin. <laughs> as a Do you play it? Imagination. I also play it, yes. Play it. That was the first instrument that I studied when I was uh, 12 years old was the violin. Um, not exactly the easiest. You know, you always start with <laughs> close the door. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but the violin and uh, and guitar as well. The flute, of course, is beautiful. And then again, you play them yeah. all together, and it's it's gorgeous. How about you, Queen Andrea? Is there an instrument that stands out for you? And do you get any of that from the cello as well? I love the cello. I love so many instruments, but. I think my favorite is the harp. Oh, harp is another one. Yes, oh, for me too. <laughs> do you like the harp too, Natalia? I love it. I do love it. Do any of you play the harp at all, or do anything? With I, the harp? if I could start all over again, you'd be. <laughs> well, was, never I, say never, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would love to dedicate um, time to to play the harp and actually sing and song right yeah. but um i yeah. i love the harp it's just so angelic and heavenly and just beautiful it's very um i'm in awe when i hear it it is amazing mm -hmm. isn't it it really mm -hmm. is um uh, uniclear may ann is watching she says hello to everybody she's watching mm -hmm. from the she's watching from the philippines she's one of oh, our yeah. regular regular viewers from the philippines and she's she's here sending her levity as uh, everybody's from around the world so um, this concert coming up, this, this fabulous event is again for a very, very special reason. And we wanna make sure that people can get tickets, people can go. Uh, are you guys, are you in rehearsals right now? Is it something you're doing already? <laughs> Individually, um, we're gonna come together uh, 
There's the website too. We have There's it on the, the website screen. where you can get the tickets only at the box office. So there you have to reserve. So uh, listen, come out if you're in Florida, come out. If you're in wherever, come out. It's going to be great. Come out and support us and enjoy. Feel the inspiration. Uh, we're going to have a little uh, VIP for those who we know that are coming out to join us in the green room afterward. Doors open 4.30, show at 5. Too. Actually, um, it's, a, it's a 6 o'clock show. So doors open at 5.30. 530. Yeah, I gotta change that on there. Yeah, that was the previous. <laughs> so the concert is a beautiful opportunity to enjoy wonderful and inspiring music as well as raise much needed funds that allow uh, Andrea Black Ministries International to continue its mission to provide art, beautiful art and cultural education, entertainment, worship conferences, self-care and empowerment around the world, especially to women and children in Africa and underprivileged nations as well. That is absolutely beautiful uh, that you're doing that. Uh, such a fantastic reason, huh? Yes. That is terrible. So if they want to get tickets, do is it the Triad Theater Direct, the box right. office? Person? Triad Theater, what you do is go on to the shows and you'll see our show on September 25th, that flyer. Yeah. And you can have our own page to so just go on there and click on the box office and get the tickets that and your cool. name will just like broadway your name will be at the door mm -hmm. mm. and um so like you said individually you guys are preparing will you then be uh getting together to perform together prior or will it be you will all meet then and there and then you're just knock it out of the park and do your thing we have a, a big uh rehearsal actually the day of the show, but earlier with our sound and our lighting and everything. Uh, we are meeting, we meet weekly and we talk about, you know, the, the order of the program and <laughs> we go over some things. So uh, I know what everybody's doing and if I need to change the order. So uh, it's, it's, it's coming together nicely. That's fantastic. Uh, Luana and uh, Natalia, you guys all excited? You're ready to go? Absolutely. I'm super excited because it's my debut show. It's your debut. Oh. It is. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. And it's a uh, comeback to New York you know, after two years. Yeah, yeah, being away. Yeah. Wow. How about you, Natalia? I bet you're all excited too. You haven't slept a wink since they announced it, right? I <laughs> well, I'm also excited because it's an uh, off-Broadway venue. Yes. Yeah, and so theater, it's an uh, mm -hmm. interesting experience. And it's also going to be my debut in Triad Theater. So I'm yes. excited. Oh, that's your, so that is your debut there as well. And Queen Andrea, have you performed at Triad too, or is this your debut there? No, I've performed there actually. Years ago, a one-woman show. <laughs> and uh, most of my shows that I did off-Broadway uh, cabaret music is at the Metropolitan Room, which is no longer there, sadly. No, I know. I've emceed concerts there for friends. Yes. I do a lot of emceeing at Carnegie Hall and other places for fellow performers. And Metropolitan Room was quite a nice little place you can get a drink and a nice little meal and it, it's it was an intimate sort of setting um 54 below is nice too that's still going and, and mm -hmm. but metropolitan room was a special place wasn't it right but the triad is set up it's a you know intimate cabaret spot sitting around the little cocktail tables you can have your juice your soda you know two drinks and um they have a fabulous staff there with lighting sound video i also wanted to say if you're in california or nashville or alaska or wherever you are then you can't get there there will be tickets on demand uh so, so it'll be have, it'll be streaming right it won't be um 
Yeah, it'll have a certain duration that you right. can see it when you buy the ticket. So if you don't get to see it that night, you'll have it'll like a, right, right, days or period where you can do yeah. that. Yeah. So um, uh, one of the staff is setting that up now. Cool. So we'll keep our, our viewers informed in that too. You can let me know and we'll keep them informed on that. That's a great, that's sort of the way a lot of things are going now, right? So if people, you, you can oftentimes reach an even larger audience uh, that could be global when, if their people aren't able to travel to certain areas and cities, but they want to see the, the show. Nothing beats being there, the camaraderie, right. hear the acoustics, see the faces of the crowd and, and meets and greets and all of that. That's as performers, you feed off that energy and then give yes. it back. Uh, but for those who still want to participate, the uh, the stream capability is another fantastic triad theater, folks, in New York City is the place. Um, this is really, really fantastic. Um, you know, there's somebody that that pops in towards the latter part of the show. He just wanted to say a quick hello. Comedian George Burns oh, is here. Oh, no. <laughs> he always pops in towards the latter part of the show <laughs> with his cigar and his red pocket square. Mr. George Burns, who, if you may remember in the movies, uh, Oh God movies, he played God. And of course, fabulous, legendary comedian, <laughs> singer, tap dancer, performer. Uh, he said, you lovely ladies, talented professionals, uh, knocked it out of the park. He learned so much about each of you individually and collectively. He loved the music. He loved all the levity and laughs and wonderful, inspiring stories. And he wishes you well, and he hopes you guys knock it out of the park in New York City, the Big Apple, at the Triad in September. Love from George Burns, huh? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I met him. Did you? Yes, at Avery Fisher Hall. There was a big, uh, oh, this is so many years ago, but there were so many stars there. The Nicholas Brothers, George Burns, was there's so many stars. And um, there was a Broadway choir. And I was in that Broadway choir. Uh, it was a wonderful conductor. I can't remember his name now, <laughs> just so long ago. But uh, a lot of those oh. uh, people in the Broadway choir really went on to some big things. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. George Burns, a, a legend. Um, any final comments or words that you guys uh, have? You know, we've chatted for almost an hour and a half. Oh, and it wow. just it never feels like it. I try to make the show warm and conversational and easy and flowing like the, the old school talk shows with a modern twist, modern vibe of today. Um, anything you'd like to share about our conversation, the show, or anything you're excited about, um, each of you? And I'll start with you, Natalia. Well, uh... It's just a real pleasure to be on your show, <laughs> Jim, and uh, wonderful to, yeah, thank you so much for having me and having Lana and Andrea. And uh, what I want to share maybe that uh, I'm going to have CD release of my uh, Christian hymns uh, with my music and lyrics uh, in January. It's coming up, so... Just stay tuned. <laughs> you have a website uh, people could go to? Is there a website? Uh, yes, nataliamedvedovskaya.com. <laughs> My name.com. Yeah, and I'm also on YouTube. And please so there's the spelling. You see you see the picture that she's in, the square that she's in? See the spelling, folks? Write that down. <laughs> and dot com. <laughs> you don't have to say it, folks. Just spell it <laughs> to get to the website, which is cool. That's great and really a, a pleasure uh, to have you here. And And I hope uh, the show met whatever expectations you had and you enjoy the time with me as much as I have with you, Natalia. Absolutely. Yes, I enjoyed it. And I want to say That's to uh, each of you that uh, collectively and individually, you're all welcome to come back if you have exciting things or you just want to stop by and say hi i'd love to have natalia luana queen andrea back here on the show either you know by yourself or and we'll talk about your life and everything career or together you're all more than welcome we'll keep the porch light on for all of you luana how about you any uh parting words about our conversation or the show or things that you're uh, excited about yes i'm really excited to come back to new york 
and to perform for my audience and my friends and that I haven't seen for two years. <laughs> it's been a while. And also I'm currently working on my TV show, which is called Songs of My Life, where I interview Nashville's best songwriters, what inspired them to write songs. So I'm currently Great. working on 10 episodes. Great. That's fantastic. Congratulations, too. And I hope for you as well that our show met the expectations you might have had and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely have with you, Luana. Yes, I I want to come back. <laughs> Thank you for having us. We will keep the light on for you as well. Queen Andrea has rounded up some fantastic friends. And now to Queen Andrea, my dear friend here. Queen Andrea, um, would you like to say anything about our conversation or the show or things that you're very excited about as well, including this upcoming uh, September concert event? Oh. I think it's uh, still I'm, muted. I'm muted. Yes. <laughs> that oh, golden, okay. There yeah. you go. Jim, thank you so much for uh, having us. I know you have a lot of programs going on, but just to have us on, so that we could share what we're doing with the world. Those in New York who can come out, the tri-state, wherever you are, come out. Um, so I really appreciate that. I enjoyed our conversation. It was just so wonderful. Um, and you're so gracious as always, um, just so lovely and encouraging, inspiring. And so I love that. It's been a joyous time with, with the girls here. and. Um, I do want to come back soon, probably sometime next year. I want to talk about my film. The documentary film will be done. Oh, that's exciting, um, huh? Yes. Maybe we could see some excerpts from that and uh, let people know where it's going to be screening. I've already gotten got offers at different uh, venues to, to have it uh, screened there. So keep me posted because if you need a uh, host MC or uh, do any red carpet stuff, I do all of that as well. I would so love it. I, I will let you know. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be kind of cool. And maybe even tie in what we're doing with the Gym Master show to one of those nights, opening night type things would be kind of cool, huh? Here right. we are on location. Uh, that would be exciting. Well, once again, because this is your return visit, and it's so nice to see you again. And I'm glad that you're in good health, good spirits, all all of you. And uh, once again, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had, Queen Andrea, and you enjoyed yes. time with me as much as I have with you. Thank you. Indeed, yes, Jim. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, ladies. You're a super talented powerhouse of passion and enthusiasm and thirst and zest for life and just uh, sharing it with the world in your individual ways and now going to be doing it collectively in New York City, gang. Make sure you get the tickets. Triad Theaters, fabulous place in New York City. There it is. You see it on the screen. Check it out and uh, inquire about the opportunities coming up for live streaming and so much more if you are watching this because we do have an audience that crisscrosses the United States, Canada, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, everywhere, even Iceland friends watch our show. So uh, really, really fantastic. And you guys just Thanks again for spending all this time with us. And, and the viewers, too, have been pouring out their oh, love and hello to the viewers. Thank you so much for coming. Such a pleasure meeting all of you. The conversation of music was outstanding. Thanks to all of you. And Jim, thank you from Mary in Florida. Mary watching in Florida. Linda, thank you, beautiful ladies, for coming on the show. I will rewatch the show from the archives. All of you seem such lovely ladies. <laughs> and they are. And talented. Thank you, ladies, for being here and sharing your musical talents with us, which is beautiful as well. And the Lovities have been commenting truly um, throughout the show, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And uh, Sal Boyd says, gifted. Yes, they are. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> gifted. And uh, really appreciate all these terrific comments from everybody. Uh, you are all a blessing. Wow. Second that. Uh, wonderful host, Mr. Hi, Jim. Sal. Thank you very much for the kind <laughs> words, Sal. Do you know Sal? Yes, Sal is a singer-songwriter. Oh, is he? Really? 
Yeah, I was trying to get it on the show, but I guess yeah. time. I mean, on the in the sh in the show with us. <laughs> oh, for the uh, yeah. Well, uh, you never know. Maybe another opportunity comes up. He he's welcome to join us on the Jim Master Show as well if he'd like to pop on. And uh, <laughs> ladies, thanks so very much. This was yeah. terrific. Uh, you guys are the very best, and and thanks for all the time, the attention, and uh, the fabulous music and the laughs and everything else here. You're truly talented and it's a pleasure having you on the show and we'll welcome you back sometime soon and good luck with the fabulous show in New York. I know you guys are going to really please yeah. that crowd. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very, very welcome. You take care. Thank, Thank you, Natalia. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone. See you all in New York at the Tri Theater. Yes, right. <laughs> High five, everybody. There we go. Boom. Perfect. All right. You guys take care. All right. Okay. Bye bye now. See you see again. And Queen Andrea, thank you for putting this together with me and working hard as you have on uh, making sure this went well. I really appreciate it. You're amazing. So are you. My pleasure. All right. Blessings and joys continued. We'll see you again soon. Okay. Bye-bye. What a wonderful array of guests here on the show, huh? Amazing to have the guests we've had. Yeah. And here are some other photos of our illustrious uh, guests. It's Queen Andrea, of course, as well. Beautiful photos that they sent our way. And we sort of sprinkled some of them in. She loves the ocean like I do. We were talking about that earlier. It's another great shot. And uh, this was really a fantastic conversation here on the show. Maybe you guys learned about each of them for the first time, or maybe you've heard of them but uh, didn't know much about each of them. Well, now you do. And, of course, Lorana, you got to hear the story about her appearance on American Idol and what the auditioning was like to be on American Idol. Another brilliant performer as well. They all bring special gifts, don't they? And of course, a brilliant dancer as well. This is just really fantastic to have each of them here on the show and talk about their careers and their passion for life. And Natalia, of course, playing uh, and tickling those ivories, telling us about her wonderful upbringing and background and experiences too as well. And on Spotify, <laughs> all right here on the Jim Masters Show for all of you. Uh, we hope you guys uh, enjoyed this episode and all the episodes of our series. We encourage and welcome you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is Jim Masters TV. There is no cost to do that at all. And make sure when you hit that red subscribe button, which then welcomes you to the Jim Masters Show Lovety family, you also uh, click the notification bell. So you'll be alerted about all the episodes. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you click that big thumbs up. <laughs> it looks like that. Make sure it's the thumbs up you click. And leave a comment on the YouTube channel for us as well. That lets us know all the fabulous things that um, you, know, you like about our show. Now, we do have something here we want to show you. We actually have a promo for the actual event and we're going to show that to you right now we wanted to save it towards the latter part of the show and um yeah let's take a look at that right now our fathers are our unsung heroes they are our kings who stood for justice fathers we are your daughters and sons and we need you in our communities we look up to you we love you we are the only ones that can tell our own stories now it's time to leave a legacy for generations to come. Our fathers are heroes, wiser than King Pharaoh. Our fathers are heroes. Our fathers are heroes. Do 
right here on the Gym Masters Show live. Pretty cool. We wanted to save that for you so you got a chance to learn about the ladies and about their passion for what they do. And that's the promo. So make sure you get your tickets, whether you're going to be there in New York City or, again, uh, check out the live streaming that's going to be happening as well. It's really, really cool. We'll also show you one more time. We'll squeeze in the uh, – there is the actual – flyer the uh, actual flyer for the event the official flyer that uh, they sent our way so we can share it with you the george d hernandez music fest with luana natalia and queen andrea and it's going to be fantastic wasn't it amazing having them all here together on our show really tremendous lots of fun inspiring good times uh, we will have them back for sure i know and thanks for all the great comments gang you guys uh, have been really really rock stars here on the gym masters show today celebrating all of this we really really love it uh spread the word about our show we've done hundreds and hundreds of episodes of the series with guests that come in from broadway hollywood television film music culinary arts sports comedy inspiration authors all kinds of mediums i mean the show is variety and entertainment and uh, and talk show inspiring conversations laughs and all the levity that comes in from around the world as well we can take a look at a few more comments and then we'll wrap up uh kathleen in new york city speaking of new york city says thank you jim great show thank you as well uh, we really appreciate that mary bishop such a pleasure meeting all of you. The conversation music, outstanding. Thanks to all of you and Jim. Thank you, Mary in Florida as well. Also in Florida, Linda Odell. Yes, thank you, Jim. You are the best. Thank you as well. We appreciate it. Good deep conversations, huh? You don't hear conversations anymore. Everybody's just ba -ba 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 -ba. We take time here on the show. Mary Bishop, another great show. Thanks, Jim. You as well, Mary. Appreciate that. Kathleen, too. Great night and weekend, you as well, and everybody. Thanks for all the great comments. This is your host, Jim Masters. Again, subscribe to our channel, peruse all the other episodes with the amazing guests we've had come through. And, uh, you know, hopefully you'll have a good day tomorrow as well. If not, we'll be here for all of you. Now, we don't say goodbye here. We say see you later. Ciao, cheers, slancha, shalom. Uh, we say moi loop, which in African means walk well. We say take care, avida zain, hasta la vista, and uh, sayonara, ciao and cheers. And uh, we always say don't forget to take care of one another. Don't forget to uh, love one another and be sure, be sure that you uh, love yourself. You got to take time for yourself. Now, I am somebody who has to be reminded of that all the time. I'm always telling everybody, take care of yourself, make sure. I also have to sometimes, uh, you know, heed my own words as well. So, um, hey guys, if you enjoyed this episode, again, give it a like on our YouTube channel, thumbs up, leave a comment. And uh, thanks for all the levity and all the great uh, passion and enthusiasm. Look at all these great, ah, Luana. She's now a lovely too. And she's, you know, the ladies are subscribed to our YouTube channel. They subscribed right away. And we love that. Queen Andrea has been subscribed for a long time. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Good vibes. Absolutely, Luana. Right back at you and, and all the ladies. All right. Jim Masters here thanking you for your time this time till next time. We'll see you on the next episode of our series. Uh, coming up tomorrow, we've got an amazing guest. Yes. Now, if you're not familiar with him, John Lacartia is a headlining stand-up comic. He sells out everywhere he goes, and he's considered the nation's funniest fireman, and he believes laughter saves lives. He's got the Laughter Saves Lives Foundation and Comedy Tour, and he's going to be joining us tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, a little bit earlier, 4 p.m. Eastern. And then over the weekend, Coming to us from Ireland on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. We're doing it at 1, so that way their folks in the U.K. and Ireland can watch it as it's airing. Uh, we have Porik Mahan and Ryan Kelly from the incredible Irish band All Folked Up. They're actually coming to New York. They're actually coming for their U.S. tour. They're going to be touring multiple cities uh, starting in September, singers, songwriters, and musicians in the group all folked up. Really fantastic Irish folk, Celtic rock band. They're really popular. They're coming over here as well. 
Did you see when Loretta Swit was on our show? Legendary actress, artist, author, watercolorist, animal welfare activist. She starred for many years on MASH. She was with us recently as well, and it was extraordinary. We also recently had acclaimed author, journalist, and biographer James Gavin with us. He wrote incredible books about the life of Peggy Lee, Lena Horne, Chet Baker, and now recently, George Michael. And they're very intimate uh, and very inviting. And you'll learn about the lives of these mega stars. And um, he was he came to us live from Fire Island, New York, actually, on the south shore of Long Island. Jeff Hanar is going to be with us uh, next week. Multiple award-winning New York cabaret concert and recording artist extraordinaire for what is a very open and beautiful an authentic conversation. He gets real about life and his life. And um, he also has concert performances that are coming up uh, as well. So he's coming up next week too. And did you see when John D. Domenico, the extraordinary Emmy nominated actor, comedian, impressionist, and writer, he does extraordinary impressions of Donald Trump, Austin Powers, Jay Leno, Dr. Phil, Ben Franklin, all of them. And all of them and many more were guests on our show when he was on about a week ago. You can check that episode out right here again on the Jim Masters Show for all of you. All right, gang. Jim Masters here thanking you for your time this time till next time. Thanks for being with us and spending all this time with us here uh, in Lovety Hall. Hope you enjoyed the show. Certainly let us know. And uh, you can find me on all of the social media. I'm at Jim Masters TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, we have a Facebook group for the show, Jim Master Show Lovely Hall. And uh, you take care and be well. See you on the next episode for those watching live. If you're not watching this live and you're watching this a month from now, stay right here. Another episode of our series comes up on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Take care and be well. We love you all. Cheers. Mm -hmm.